This video is brought to you by Blessed Be God Boutique, maker of Catholic fashionable apparel, handmade accessories, and more. You know, I've gotten a few comments in the last week from people. Where is that Latin Mass Band document that everybody said was a fact that was coming? Many are making a big deal out of it being left unsigned by Pope Francis. Now, to be fair, most traditional Catholic commentators were saying it was a rumored document that was rumored to be signed on one of several dates, depending on which source you got it from. But most of us did report on the fact that it was left unsigned, and we gave you good explanations for that. The short version is that Francis was apparently not convinced by the document and by the need for the document, and especially by those promoting it. In fact, the day it was supposed to be released, I had did a video on the main actor behind it, a creature who was fueled by ambition and antipathy towards the Catholic faith, an archbishop named Viola, who really, really wants the red hat. He wants to become a cardinal more than anything. And as I said in that video, Pope Francis has demonstrated time and again that he does not really like ambitious people unless they hide their ambition and just serve him completely without pushing him around. It's one of his more endearing traits, actually. But we talked about that, and the document came and went without ever being released. That doesn't mean it's we're in the clear yet. It could very well happen. He's reportedly not convinced by it. But behind the scenes, there's something interesting happening. Religious orders continue to get pushed around by Rome. Many of them are having their, their convents and their monasteries put under apostolic visitations, where representatives from the diocese on behalf of Rome, or representatives from Rome, directly go visit the organizations, usually putting some of the most corrupt men possible at the charge of this. Men who have a history of being dutifully loyal to the Vatican, which you in normal times would be fine. But when you dig into their backgrounds, you find out that these, these men are not fit for the priesthood, almost always. And they go there, they investigate, and they find problems where these religious orders are too rigid, too tied to their classic charisms, and don't go along with the new religion. We have a story like that today. You see, they're told, these religious orders are told that they have to slowly start abandoning their pre-conciliar devotions, their pre-conciliar charisms that make Dominicans, as in the story today I'm going to tell you, Dominicans, and in general, abandon traditional liturgical practices. We have here today the response of one group of Dominicans that have been given orders like these. While the rest of the world was paying attention to other things, very important things going on, a group of French Dominicans have been ordered to slowly start phasing out the old religion in favor of the new. Mark my words, this is the roadmap the Vatican and the Bergolians running it today are going to implement for the universal church. Religious orders stand out in the traditional landscape because many t in many places, they're the only place where you can get the traditional sacraments, the traditional form of the Mass. Why? Because the FSSP, the SSPX, the Institute of Christ the King, and all the rest don't have the resources to have parishes in every single diocese. They simply don't. And in many places, the bishops have shut down their traditional Mass offerings entirely in the dioceses, leaving only religious orders. Take out the religious orders, and what happens next? You simply have nothing available for the general public. Religious orders are the fertile testing ground for the attempt to suppress the Mass entirely. So, for this story, we go to the website of the Institute of the Dominicans of the Holy Spirit out of France, where they posted a press release on July 25th, which has gotten a little attention by the broader Catholic media. So here is their press release. In a statement dated the summer of 2023, we briefly mentioned the liturgical question, which is particularly sensitive in these times. We specified that the Holy See, without asking us to renounce the Vetus Ordo, traditional Latin Mass, invited us to reflect on how to demonstrate in our convent life too, and not only on a few external occasions, that we do not exclude the Missal according to the Novus Ordo. This reflection has advanced over the past year, and the elements of it have been communicated to the Holy See. At the beginning of the summer, he asked us, meaning the Vatican, as you may have known, that the Masses during our community retreat at the end of July be celebrated according to the Novus Ordo, except on Sundays. The liturgical dignity, piety, and beauty to which we attach importance will remain. 
All the more so since our preacher this year is accustomed to celebrating in Gregorian ad orientum. Other decisions of the Apostolic See in liturgical matters had been announced to us and were communicated to the Institute today. They significantly modify our current practice. We give them below, so that all those who wish may have access to precise information. From the beginning of the next liturgical year, starting December 1st, 2024, first, the Holy See asks us to follow the liturgical calendar currently in force in the Universal Church for the Roman Rite, meeting the Novus Ordo's liturgical calendar, not the traditional Masses liturgical calendar. He, the Vatican, also asks that in our different houses, the Mass be celebrated according to the Novus Ordo, one once week per the month, with the exception of Sundays, the Vetus Ordo remaining in use for the three other weeks and every other Sunday. He specifies that the readings of the Mass will be for each day those of the current Roman lectionary, and all the prefaces of the Missal of Paul VI will be used during the Masses according to the Vetus Ordo. These measures require of us an important step towards the discovery of the renewed liturgy. They will also arouse fears. It goes without saying that we will ensure careful implementation in Latin and Gregorian ad orientum, which will continue to manifest the liturgy as the primary and indispensable source of all Christian life, according to the constant concern of the Church. It is equally clear to us in keeping with our heritage that obedience to the Holy Father remains for the Dominican Sisters of the Holy Spirit an intangible principle to which to conform their conduct. Our census ecclesiae, our constitutions, and fidelity to the her heritage of Father Berto oblige us. We express the hope that these changes will be a source of careful and profound reflection, and the continuity and respect of our approach of ecclesial docility. We are also particularly keen to keep our schools in a spirit of peace, which alone comes from God. Entrusting ourselves to your prayer, we assure you of ours, with the desire that everyone keep in mind the constant mission of the liturgy, inseparably to glorify God and to lead us to holiness. And that is the letter, rather incredible, from the Dominican nuns. Now, there's going to be a couple of logistics problems they're going to have. The traditional Mass, meaning the Mass that evolved over time, naturally, from the, the Apostles to the, the papacy of Pope St. Gregory the Great, and then on, later on, all the way through... Pius V, and all the way on to the 1960s before it was done away with. It, it developed organically, was not invented by St. Pius V, no matter what some person online may have told you. It has a different liturgical calendar, and woven into the Mass are prayers and uh, chants and other things part of that liturgical calendar. They're now told that the, mat, that the traditional Masses they offer have to be in accordance with the 1962 or the 1970 Missal, well, the 2008 revision of it, really, the most recent one, but the, the Novus Ordo. That's going to be a trick, by the way, <laughs> to do. Uh, I'm sure uh, traditional priests who are um, very, very, very loyal to Pope Francis and go along with Traditionus Custodos without nary a word against it will find a way to do it. But that is going to be a Herculean task because the prayers and the settings are different, almost completely. That's the roadmap. This is now a form of the a hybrid traditional Latin Mass with the Novus Ordo. This is the first step of a hybrid, to move away from the traditional Mass. And that is what they're doing to some of the religious orders. First, as far as I can tell with them, but that's only because they went public with this. I don't know why they chose to go public, but they did. And in so doing, they reveal what it looks like they're going to do to the rest of the church, leaving the FSSP, the SSPX, and the rest, hopefully, as the only sources of the traditional Mass. And I say hopefully, because it would be better that they offer the traditional Mass unadulterated with this stuff that you see these Dominican nuns being forced to do, rather than not having it at all. That's where we are. This is coming, because remember, Traditionus Custodus says, either in the document or in its accompanying letter that Pope Francis wrote to the bishops, the, the end purpose is to bring traditional Catholics, those of us dedicated to the same mass, same sacrament, same sacramental, same religion that our ancestors had until 1969, to bring us back into the Novus Ordo. And this is the roadmap for it. Curious what you think about this, so let me know in the comments, please. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't, it does help. 
so to sharing this on social media, that helps too. If you've ever thought about supporting the work of Return Tradition, now is a great time to do so. Links in the description box below to Patreon, Subscribestar, and other options that channel supporters have asked for over the years, as well as the join button below for supporting through YouTube. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.